Picture this. You're looking at a hundred people, just regular folks going about their day, and among all of them, there's one person who has a rare disease. Just one out of a hundred. And now imagine we have this medical test, a really good one that's 99% accurate. It catches the disease 99% of the time when someone has it, and it correctly identifies healthy people 99% of the time too. Sounds pretty reliable, right? Well, here's where things get really surprising and counterintuitive. You go to the doctor, take this test, and it comes back positive. Your heart probably sinks, and you might think, well, if the test is 99% accurate and I tested positive, then I must be 99% likely to have the disease. But wait, let me show you why that intuition is completely wrong, and the real answer will blow your mind. Let's think about what happens when we test all 100 people in our population. We have one sick person and 99 healthy people. Remember, that's our starting point. When we test the one sick person, there's a 99% chance they'll test positive, so they almost certainly will. But here's the crucial part. When we test those 99 healthy people, the test will incorrectly show positive for about one of them. Because even our 99% accurate test makes mistakes 1% of the time. So now we have two people with positive test results, one who's actually sick, our true positive, and one who's healthy but got a false positive. That means we have two positive tests total, one true positive and one false positive. And this is the key insight coming up. Thus, if you're one of those two people who tested positive, you have exactly a 50% chance of being the actually sick one. Yes, 50%, not 99% like our intuition suggested. And this happens because we didn't properly account for how rare the disease is in the first place. This counterintuitive result is exactly why we need Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem gives us a mathematical way to update our beliefs when we get new evidence. And here's the formula. The probability of being sick given a positive test, which we write as P of sick given the positive test, equals P of a positive test given sick times P of sick, all divided by P of a positive test. Let me break this down so it becomes crystal clear what each piece means and why we need it. First, we have P of sick, which is our prior probability, or base rate, that's the 1% or 0.01 .01 we started with. This is what we knew before any testing, just the general rate of the disease in the population. Next, we have a P of a positive test, given sick, which is the likelihood, the test's accuracy for sick people, and that's 99% or 0.99. Then we have P of a positive test, the evidence, which is the total probability of testing positive regardless of whether you're sick or healthy. To find the probability of a positive test, we need to consider both ways someone can test positive. You could be sick and test positive, which happens with probability 0.01 .01 times 0.99 giving us 0.0099. Or you could be healthy and test positive, which happens with probability 0.99 times 0.01, .01, also giving us 0.0099. Adding these together, we get 0.0198 as our total probability of testing positive. Now we can put it all together. P of sick given plus equals 0.99 times 0.01 .01 divided by 0.0198, that's 0.0099 divided by 0.0198, which equals exactly 0.5 or 50%. The calculation confirms what we discovered by counting. You have a 50-50 chance of actually being sick if you test positive. Now here's what really drives home the importance of base rates. Imagine the same 99% accurate test, but for a disease that affects 30% of people instead of 1%. With this more common disease, if you test positive, you'd be about 97% likely to actually have it, much higher compared to the 50% you get when you test positive for a rare disease. Same test, same accuracy for testing, but completely different meaning because the base rate changed everything. 
And that basically wraps up this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything I post here. Also, if you'd like to support what I do, consider becoming a member either here or on Patreon. Your support really goes a long way and helps me keep creating content like this. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.